But now, with a new administration, how does this match up with what President Biden's policies and executive actions will mean for our religious freedoms? Here to discuss, we are joined by three top religious voices from different faiths. The president of the Zionist Organization of America, Mark Klein, president of Family Research Council, Tony Perkins, we hope to be joined by him shortly, and the president of CatholicVote.org, Brian Birch. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Good to be here. Great to be with you. All right. Brian, I'm going to start with you. Talk to me about um, what we're seeing so far regarding the actions of President Biden and his administration as it pertains to religious freedom. Well, there's been really two different things we're looking at so far. One is some of the policy changes that the Biden administration is already implementing in the form of executive orders. These are compelling taxpayers to now pay for abortion overseas. Uh, they also uh, new mandates that are requiring institutions to t uh, allow men who identify as women into their bathrooms, locker rooms, or into their women's sports programs. The second piece is, is personnel. Uh, personnel is policy, of course, in politics, and we're seeing from cabinet appointments, uh, HHS and OMB, uh, a record of deep hostility to people of faith that I think it should worry a lot of people uh, that care about religious freedom. Yeah, speaking of hostility, Mort, uh, Trump was a huge supporter of our relationship with Israel and the Jewish community. Um, but you just recently put out a list of people in the Biden administration who you say are hostile to Israel. People such as Anthony Blinken, Avril Haines, Alejandro Mayorkas. I mean, how do you quantify this? Can someone be hostile to Israel but be pro-religious freedom? In almost every case, people who are hostile to Israel are hostile to Jews. <clears throat> if you're hostile to Italy, I assure you, you don't like Italians. And uh, uh, Tony Blinken, the Secretary of State, uh, won't even put the uh, anti-Israel terrorist group, IRGC, on the terrorist list. He embraces haters of Israel who have uh, praised the Jew killers. Now, Avril Haines has signed Israel letters saying there should be more criticism of Israel in the Democratic Party, has condemned Israeli terrorism when there is no Israeli terrorism. And Mayorkas was uh, on the board of Hayas, an organization that deals with Islamic relief, which is a terrorist financing group on Israel's terrorist list and on UAE's terrorist list. And by the way, Robert Malley, the new envoy to Iran, the top guy, he wants Iran to get nuclear weapons. He's against sanctions on Iran. He wants to throw hundreds of thousands of Jews out of their homes and give that land to the Arabs. And there's 15 more extraordinarily hostile people to uh, Israel that uh, Biden, Obama has uh, uh, put in place. And by the way, I blame Obama. I believe he's behind the scenes. These are his friends that he's putting in these positions. <laughs> and uh, uh, I've never in my life seen this many people hostile to the Jewish state of Israel appointed to important posts as Barack Obama, or Biden, has done. We have seen. Uh, Tony Perkins, welcome to the show. Glad that we were able to get you. Um, you know, Biden wants to reverse the Hyde Amendment and reverse the Mexico City policy. Brian was kind of mentioning this earlier, but both allow taxpayer dollars to fund abortion services, home and abroad. How are you fighting back against these specific things? It's not a surprise that they want to do away with the Mexico City. That's a ping pong ball that uh, with a Republican administration comes back in, uh, that ban on foreign funding of abortion. But what is new, and this is a turning point, this shows us where the Democratic Party is no longer liberal, they're leftist. And that is the elimination of Hyde, which has been in place since 1975, designed to force every American to fund elective abortions in this country. And part of this is the education process. I mean, most of the vast majority, 55 percent of Democrats don't, do not want to fund abortions overseas. The same applies here in the United States. So what, what we have to do is continue to put pressure on those members of Congress who are in marginal districts that were won by President Trump in this last election, because election is coming in two years, and this is a stretch to force every American to fund abortion. Brian, I want to talk to you a little about what that pressure actually looks like, because you mentioned the Equality Act, which is going to be voted on tomorrow, it looks like, by the House, where it will most likely pass. Um, explain the impact and how people of faith can fight back against that. Yeah, very specifically, it shows, as Tony suggests, what the priorities of this administration are. We still haven't seen COVID relief, and yet we're now looking to pass bills that are going to compel religious institutions 
uh, to uh, violate their deeply held religious beliefs when it comes to whether it be bathrooms or locker rooms, as, as, I, as I suggest, or even their teachers or pastors. This law could, could uh, uh, you know, impact the, the pri deep privately uh, uh, decision making of, of religious institutions and, and, and frankly force them to, to violate their faith. Uh, where what we need to do is, as Tony suggests, in these in these districts where you have uh, moderate Democrats that are being pulled to the far left against the wishes of their constituencies, and of course in the Senate where you have one, two, or three senators uh, with such a tight margin in the Senate that that could doom a lot of this legislation. And so we're going to be very careful about protecting and making sure that uh, the religious Americans understand the agenda of this administration. I mean, whoever thought that our religious freedoms would be this much under attack, especially from someone who calls himself a devout Catholic, you think that they would be fighting for these things. But more, how can people of faith work together at this time to have more religious freedom and make sure that their voices are heard? Well, this Equality Act is a disgrace. It really says that the Bible is, believing in it, is bigotry. The Bible, which says marriage is between a man and a woman, uh, uh, or, or other such precepts, uh, now this act says a, a, a rabbi who believes, first of all, for example, that a Jew should only marry another Jew may be forced to do marriages of a Jew uh, with a non-Jew. People can do what they wish, but rabbis should not be forced to do things that violate the precepts of the Bible, uh, and by the way, almost all of these precepts, serious Catholics and serious Jews that have uh, similar beliefs about these issues, this goes extraordinarily long against uh, freedom of religion. It's a very, very dangerous act. Uh, all people of faith, all reasonable people must call their senators and members of Congress to vote against this terrible act, which will eliminate freedom of religion in the United States of America. Yeah, I mean, this is why our forefathers came here. Tony, I just have a few seconds left, but if people are watching and they want to figure out more information, how to be informed on all these things and how they can get involved, where would you suggest they go? Well, number one, we keep our freedoms by using our freedom, so we need to exercise them. That's the freedom of speech, freedom of religion, but also check out organizations that are involved in this issue, many of us here, Family Research Council and others, but the main thing is do not be silent. Do not silence yourself just because the left wants you to be silent. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. Sorry that we're out of time, but hope to have you back to continue to expose what's happening, encourage people of faith to speak up. Thank you. Thank All right. You. We're going to continue our discussion about religious freedom with the executive editor of the Newsmax magazine. Don't go away.